brisk chilling air is calling and out there we're free to run and jump and live so wild welcome ladies and gentlemen to valence league division two and we've got a banger i hope today i'm motor i'm here with recollect how are you doing yeah i'm not doing too badly not too badly it's nice to be back here in valence league and ready to watch week number three here of division two Yes, and we've got eSports Wales Ola. I, I can't speak Welsh, so I don't know what the <laughs> what the scream at the end of it is. Uh, but they're facing a team called the Legend of Garen Mid. And uh, true to their name, or rather not, they've played Garen Top in the game they've played so far. So let's see if they put the big man in the mid lane today. Yeah, it's actually a big brain strategy, you see, because anyone who sees the team, they'll think, oh, instant Garen Mid. But no, it's going to go towards that top side. And, you know, I like the idea of, of Garen in these sort of situations just because of the fact that you can you know get people a little bit of matchup unfamiliarity um and honestly it's kind of a good staple for this team in general is the fact that they have a lot of one tricks that people aren't used to playing against things like this zillion support pick coming through from ragged right uh, race and potentially something like the fiora or the Jarvan in the top lane yes uh, i'm also interested to see if they uh, run uh, back to the karma top that we saw or rather that they played last week in their win against prime tales uh, esports wells that is so they, they do light their enchanters. Uh, let's see if the bans hit any of them. Yeah, and it is always worth noting when we do talk about amateur leagues is that the pick ban always looks a little bit different than uh, what you might expect from an LEC, LCS. For example, this Jarvan I mentioned uh, wouldn't normally be banned out in the top, top level, but because of the nature of one tricking, you will see some of these power picks potentially go through, like Gwen, like Viego, but they may not be picked up. Yes, uh, it does take some time to learn these champions. And if you're not a professional... You might not have the time to play it on the level of your main champions. This is what I find very, very exciting as well in these drafts of these amateur leagues. Uh, because we see champions that we don't usually see in pro play, and uh, they still can pop off. Yeah, it's nice to get a little bit of knowledge testing, shall we say. And on the subject of knowledge testing, the fact that this Jarvan and Nico have been banned away means that either the Fiora for Zephyr will be open, or potentially... Uh, oh, sorry, for the side of Ard would be open, or potentially that Zillion for Ragged Reese, so keep an eye out for which one of those is left open. Right, last ban is the Zillion, so Fiora would be available. Let's see what the blind picks are going to be. I'm really, really interested to see. They've been picking supports that have good engage potential, uh, but pairing them with Enchanters in one of the solo lanes. So they do like their supportive playstyle for their carries, but the carries come first, it seems. Samira is the first lock-in. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of a Samira blind. I feel like a lot of the time you can pick basic disengage-based compositions with high CC and they can kind of block her out. And on top of that, something that can force her to sit under the tower like this Karma is going to be very powerful. However, that Karma is a three-way flex between the mid support and top lane positions. So I like having that Karma with uh, Xin Zhao as you have picked that enhanced rock for him early, but you also have a bit of draft flexibility. Right, Karma, Xin Zhao, both champions that have been used to great effect by this team. Xin Zhao even banned in two of the three games last time. Uh, so a pick to be feared, maybe, from Sliney, who's been very, very good in this last week. And now the team Garen picks the Garen for a solo lane, we hope. Maybe it's mid lane. I mean, we have discussed the potential of it going towards the mid lane, but as we said before, it has gone to the top lane before, so don't expect this one to be a guaranteed mid lane Garen for the Chronicles <laughs> of Garen mid. It might just be that name-based baiting uh, that could come through. Um, and I think realistically you don't want to pick your other solo laner here just to hide that potential flex capability. And this is actually a really interesting situation because um, there has been some games here of the Swain, I believe, as a um, support, at least in the past. So this isn't guaranteed to go towards um, the mid lane just yet. Yeah, the Raven Master, probably for the support role, but is always a champion that certain players that played the champion a lot are willing to put towards a solo lane. So we'll have to see where we go. The Alistar, also a champion, banned last week three times against Esports Wales. Now finally, Jamie will be able to play it. Let's see the plays that he can pull out with it. I hope he hits his combos. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing to note here is the fact that you are locking in the Samira with the Swain now, which means that you're very reliant on landing that never move pull to really set up your damage in that bot lane 2v2. So if those pulls aren't hitting, it gives a really free window for JME to just jump in with that headbutt pulverize, and if paired with an aggressive AD carry such as something like the Kaisa or the Tristana, could be very dangerous here for this Samira matchup. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one note to to bring here is that Alistar being locked in also already means the Karma is going to a solo lane. It's not going to be a Karma support. 
and uh, the ADK bands already coming out here, the Varus will not be allowed to be paired with the Zalistar. Yeah, Karma is a matchup that I feel like you're not too unhappy to play into something like the Garen. It's not exactly the best matchup in the world, but there was an old time in which someone would go a tank-based Karma um, with the Frozen Gauntlet, the Frozen Fist, um, and that actually had a really solid matchup into the Garen. I don't expect to see that, as we do tend to see a lot more defensive Karma with the Shirelias purchasing and the uh, support itemization, um, but it's definitely an option that is on the table. Yeah, guaranteed no trolling though this time. Trundle as the last ban from the side of Esports Wales. Let's see the very final ban of this this game uh, going towards mid or ADC, but I do expect another ADC. Yeah, I'm also kind of thinking that. It's interesting to see the Sakali come through because it does mean the Tristana and the Kaisa both on the table. Personally, I'd prefer to see the Tristana out of those two. If you have a perfect champion pool and you can play any AD carry, then I feel like that is kind of the pickup here that is just the best for your team composition. However, you know, there are other champions that can work, but with a dive-based composition, dive-based AD carries are almost certainly the lock-in. Yeah, also Tristana, not exactly the most difficult champion to play uh, on a general level. Speaking of difficult champions, though, here comes the Vayne. I'm not massive on the vein. I mean, the argument is, is that you need something to melt through the Garen, which makes some sense. However, you know, Tristana has that value within herself, and on top of that, Vayne can't really follow in as well um, with the initial engage from Alistar. But having said that, they haven't built themselves a super hard dive composition just yet, so they can pivot into this vein, then go for some sort of control mage in the mid lane, pivot the comma towards top, and then it can still work out fairly well. All right, then. Control mages in the mid lane is what uh, Garen mid also seems to be wanting. It's the Azir, which does confirm uh, they are tra tra they're doing treason on their own name again, putting the Garen on in the top lane uh, with this long-range control mage in the mid lane. The only thing missing is a jungler, and here we go. It's a horse. It is a horse. However, when you look at this blue side composition, the biggest factor to me is they are very lacking in crowd control that is consistent. I mean, look at what they have at the moment. They've got the Emperor's Divide here for the Azir. They've got um, the Onslaught of Shadows here for the Hecarim, and maybe the Never Move pull from a Swain. But outside of that, that's all they really have that can lock anyone down. So it's a very difficult composition that requires a lot of um, catching and picking and also hopes that the other team will engage onto you. Um, I believe that we are going to see this dodge here just for a second due to champion pool limitations. Um, so it's likely that we'll now see someone sort of highlight what the champion is. Uh, never mind, that was just a bug. Uh, so forgive me. Um, <laughs> anyway, we will get back to that one as soon as we can do once we know what that last pick is. Uh, but for now, I'm still expecting to be a control mage. But there are a couple of assassin matchups you can run into the Azir. Um, obviously, the, the main one most people think of is the Echo. Um, you can run into him and can be, have a pretty good matchup. Uh, but there are a couple others that you could do for nicheness. Uh, maybe even run something like an Oriana into it. Yeah, Oriana was what uh, would have come to my mind uh, as well. Very much agree here. Because they've already got the Karma Shield. Um, they they do want the speed up probably as well from uh, the Oriana, just like with the Karma. Because they, they are a comp with pretty low range, right? You, you spoke about the similar... Thing with the slippery AD carry that uh, that they want against a comp with low CC, but they do net need to get the vein in range because uh, getting in range against Swain and Samira not the very easiest thing in the world, especially when they're assisted by an Azir. So the speed up the shield, I think Oriana would be a perfect fit here for the composition. As we're speeding through this remake of Champ Select, uh, that was hindered by a Champion Select bug, it seems, uh, where we can thank Riot Games once again. There's one more aspect to the Oriana pick that we didn't really mention, and that's the board delivery system that has been locked in with the other champions, right? Because one of the biggest problems with Oriana is the fact that if you're not landing high-value shockwaves, the champion doesn't have as much value when the game goes later and later. She's not bad scaling, but it's quite awkward without those landing. And as such, you want to pick some sort of champions that can uh, make your composition sort of come online more effectively. And as such, having someone like a Zinjiao that jumps onto the enemy to give a free shockwave, or this Alistar that can do the same thing can be very powerful. However, I believe that the players are just going to be locking in um, the exact same picks in the same order, so we'll have to see um, you know, what is going to be um, the mid lane pick in a moment. But yeah, as of late, I feel as though the game is going way more towards mid-game fighting than it used to, though. So I can understand picking something that's a bit more strong in the early game, because I feel as though, unless it's a cloud roll, the soul has so much value on whichever team ends up scaling better than the other team. Yeah, definitely. Dragon Soul, uh, an aspect of the game that we've seen for quite a while now, but uh, 
never quite as powerful in my view as in in the recent times uh, with the dragon stacking getting uh, a bit slower again after these super fast clearing champions like the Udia have rot rotated out the meta a little bit. Dragon's giving even more power here and it's looking like a Syndra lock-in here for the mid lane, not the Orianna, but also something very, very powerful in the mid and late game. Yeah, still a starting controlled mage. Syndra is known to be a matchup that people are happy to play into the Azir with the knowledge that you know, if he ever tries to stand still to hit you, you're just going to land that scatter the weak stun and look for an all-in with your ultimate. Um, however, um, it does mean that you're not going to have as much ability to get through these tankier base champions such as the Garen, such as the Hecarim, such as the Swain to an extent, um, than you would have with the Orianna going something like the Leandris, uh, just due to the nature of Syndra being much more skill shot reliant to actually hit um, these champions. And as such, it does mean that there's a bit of a magic damage issue in the late game in regards to the fact that all of your magic damage is mostly burst based. Yeah, and uh, we have to remember they did put a Karma in the top lane, so there's not going to be all too much damage coming from that solo lane. So they will be relying on Syndra and Vayne for their damage mostly, as Xin Zhao is not the champion that scales best in the world. Uh, but speaking of surprises, it seems that Ard will be on the Azir and will have Papa in the mid lane, hopefully with the Garen. Does this make sense, putting Azir against Karma and Garen against Syndra? I'd say not really. Um, the argument that could be made is the fact that I actually think that Karma is a decent match into the Azir anyway in the early game, particularly utilizing um, the Marshal Q to just push the wave and uh, harass him down with the added wave clear advantage you have early on. On top of that, it's quite hard for a Garen to close the gap onto Syndra due to the nature of his kit, um, given the fact that all he can do is really run at you, and as such, that means it's an almost guaranteed scatter the weak stun. A little bit of phase rush trading comes through from just Harry, and then he can usually get out scot free. So I think it's really difficult to play this Garen in any of these lanes. I would have preferred to see the Azir into Syndra early, and then you can maybe look to swap after level 6, where Azir starts to gain a bit more value into the Karma. Right, we'll have to see what uh, the Legend of Garen mid will attempt to do with their champions. Now looking at these finished compositions, uh, they both seem to have at least kind of an identity. Um, now, now looking at what they can do, Ricolet, what do you expect this early game to go like? Who do you expect to come out on top? Well, at the top of my head, looking at this two compositions, the red side composition has a lot of proactivity within its lanes. I mean, the amount of CC that is available for the Xin Zhao to look to gank towards is very high. I mean, you've got the headbutt pulverized in the bot side, we've already mentioned the scatter weak, but also that tether in the top side here for Zephyr. So any sort of CC setup is going to result in a flash being blown as well as a potential kill threat if the flash isn't blown. So I feel as though expect to see Iceleni going very aggressively with his pathing, trying to make stuff happen early. On the flip side, this Hecarim here for Bakishima, not as much setup and as such, probably going to have to play much more farm oriented style until level six. All right, then uh, with, with these lanes set up, um... I don't think the Vayne Alistar will have any ability to to be pushing against Samira Swain. So would you, as the Hecarim, hover towards this bot side to guarantee the Samira some safety, maybe get some tower plates, guarantee an early Drake, as we've already touched on the importance of the dragons? This should be their big uh, power point in the other game, should it not? It's, it's a very difficult one, um, because the argument that would be made is the fact that in a situation where... Um, Alistar is unable to find an initial engage onto Samira. It's always going to be winning for the blue side composition. However, there is a situation in which the lane gets very tough. From level one, it's very free. Uh, obviously, Alistar kind of sacrifices lane at level one. Um, and as such, you usually tend to see a, fir a first two wave being shoved in on the bot side. And then from there, the wave shoves back into you. And then you can look to gank it around three minutes when the um, spot crab comes up. So... Provided the blue side composition plays it with that double slow push on the first two waves, lets it push back, they can look for a really solid gank timing onto this vein Alistar. However, I think from level three onwards, it becomes very scary and becomes a very um, skill-based matchup. Because in the event that this Samira does get locked up, a chain CC is very dangerous from headbutt pulverize into condemn against a wall. As, you know, if you can't get that W off to mitigate the condemn, there's a lot of damage that can come through on this very squishy champion, and as such, it's very dependent on you know whether this never move pull lands or whether or not uh, this Alstar can connect with that combination onto Samira. That is the thing we need to watch out for in this lane, guys. Right then, as we enter loading screen, looking at some runes, some summoner spells, anything that pokes your eye, anything that you find a bit uh, out of place, maybe. Uh, in terms of the rune choice, it is a little bit interesting to me to see. 
Um, the aftershock come through here from Jamie on the Alistar. It, it's kind of a staple of Alistar in terms of if you want to be you know, tanking the early stages, but I feel like in this kind of laning phase, you just want to jump in WQE and then after that just pop out. So I think the phase rush has a lot more value, particularly in the laning phase as well as later on, as you gain so much value from your ultimate that you don't actually need the tanky stats that much. Um, outside of that, I think everything is fairly standard. I mean, we could mention the fact that the Karma is going grasp, which indicates more of the tank-based uh, building, which I did sort of mention a little bit, the, the potential of utilizing something like this. Um, tank Karma to mitigate the Garen. However, knowing that is maybe the Azir matchup they'll be facing probably will pivot into that Shirelia's itemization to adapt. Mm. The only other thing to mention, I think, is obviously this um, Conqueror choice here for Papa in the mid lane. Um, I think Conqueror in general is obviously quite strong, but it's going to be difficult to see if he can prop that in the laning phase, especially against this uh, double range solo laners, regardless of who he does decide to go into. Right, as I was about to say that we need to synchronize with stream, the teams have given us the favor of pausing the game, uh, where I can also um, ask you about this exhaust on the vein. Um, is it worth putting it over the heel, uh, even against someone like Samir who really wants to jump onto you? Exhaust over heel? Yep. Good choice? Absolutely. I think that in general, heal is kind of overrated, especially against hard dive compositions. And when you look at this blue side composition, Samira is going to be diving in and looking to assassinate. The Hecarim is going to be doing the same thing. And as such, the argument would need to be made, would heal actually help against any of these champions? Do you gain any value from the movement speed? Arguably not really. So then you're just looking at the HP that you're getting back. And in that regard, I think Exhaust is blocking more damage and as such is a better choice. All right, then. Um, as we seem to be live on Summoner's Rift now, champions about to be moving out of the fountain. Do we still need to pause and sync up? Uh, it does seem like I'm having big lag. Screen issues anyway. Yes, uh, pause at 16 seconds yeah. uh, by non default. Uh, but I think the pause should have synced us up anyway. Okay. Um, uh, if production would give us the, the, the information there, pause on 16 2, probably. Yeah. Pause champ. Uh, so uh, with Riot helping us in synchronization as the champions move out the fountain. We do not seem to be seeing a five-point start from the blue team uh, on first glance, but they are spreading out all the same, uh, with the exception of Samira clumping with top and jungle. Could this be a sign of a late invade here? Yeah, definitely a possibility. However, unfortunately for them, it is I'm just Harry that is there to potentially block it, and as such, kind of difficult to engage with. The only CC they have is the never move pull from Swain, and I feel as though with Scatter the Weak, or rather with the uh, face rush here for the Syndra, it's quite difficult to really look for an aggressive play onto her. Um, so I'm just expecting them to just sort of sit here and then recall and go back to their regular lanes. Something I find very interesting in all of this, the Azir is sitting by the bot lane. Could this be uh, the mother of all lane swaps? The the season four special? All right, now they're moving no. forward. Uh, but uh, Harry has noticed them already. They're moving in towards this red buff. Uh, Looks like they want Makashima to start on that one, but the counter invade is already happening. Uh, they could be collapsed on three versus two. Not looking good here. Yeah, however, the Samira is coming back here, so it's going to be 4v3. Yeah, this could be a full-on skirmish. Makashima eating a lot of damage from the auto attacks already, though. Running away from Zephyr as fast as his four legs will take him, and uh, we can call this invade slightly, slightly unsuccessful. Yeah, it is odd, though, that we do see the lane swap. However, it wasn't the lane swap I was expecting. Instead, it's going to be the Samira and the Swain on the bot side and on the top side. But there is a major reason as to why this isn't considered to be a, a solid strategy, and that's the fact that um, a few patches ago, to mitigate the potential of lane swapping, the amount of tower damage on the top side taken in the early game from multiple people is actually lowered significantly compared to the bot lane towers and as such. That's why you tend to see your duo lanes play in the bot side. All right, then. Let's see if they can deal with this one, as uh, Papa is taking a lot of damage from the Syndra. As kind of expected in the melee versus ranged matchup, but uh, still sacrificing a lot here for all, all these lane swaps. Yeah, and the big notice point as well on top of that tower plate uh, situation is um, which lane is going to suffer more in terms of the 2v2. And I feel as though... That comes down to who is more effective at tower diving the enemy and denying CS. And in my opinion, I actually think that the Vayne and Alistar side is going to have better value. Nice trading mid. 
Yeah, that's a lot of damage onto Papa. Of course, as the Garen, he will be healed up by his passive, but a good ward in the chicken pit allows Syndra to already see where Hecarim is here. No danger from a prevention of this bot lane dive that's already being set up. It's a 3v1. Yeah, not survive this. They're going for it. Here comes one knockup. Here comes another knockup, and it's an easy kill. First blood goes to Sliny, and no return kill on the support. Well executed by Esports Wales. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about in terms of the fact that it goes to whoever is going to be able to perform that dive more effectively and guess where the jungle path thing is. It's Xin Zhao bot side, Hecarim bot side, meaning you can't dive on the top side. Oh, again. Oh, no, Art, why did you teleport to the lane? You know they're all still there and your jungler is not there to help. Another kill goes to Slinny on the Xin Zhao. Now 2-0 at not even four minutes in the game. A plate also falls. Disastrous start for the Legend of Garen mid. Yeah, that's just a tragedy now because this Azir is going to be permanently out of the game because how is he ever meant to go back to the laning phase now down so much CS? He's 0-2, he's only got himself the tier and the boots and realistically speaking, once you see this reset come through here from the Vayne Alistar lane, likely picking up a lot of attack speed, it's very difficult to actually, you know, stop them from re-diving you over and over again and on the top side, how do you dive this, this karma? It's so difficult because you don't have that easy CC setup. Yeah, and in addition to this, uh, you mentioned uh, which 2v2 lane will be in an advantage from this lane swap. And uh, in addition to that, we also have to look at which lane is more at a disadvantage when we come to the solo lanes. Do you want, like, what would you, what do you rather have on your team? An underfed Azir or a resource poor Karma? Uh, I know what I would choose 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, and also I like this change up to go towards the top side because now you can't make that redive play using the Hecarim because there's no way you can dive this Vayne Alistar without losing at least two members in a two for two trade, which is going to be negative for you. So um, it's definitely not a play now that can really be made here from Makishima. Yeah, uh, the only thing going for them right now is that they did get one played for themselves in this top lane. And now with the 2v2 going against each other, they will be trying to shut this Vayne down a little bit more. And uh, Papa's still eating a lot of punishment from Syndra in the mid lane. Look at the CS numbers. Yeah. Oh, Harry. That is an E, but uh, Harry not really phased by this, it seems. Uh, no horse play today. And here comes Sliny, who's already got two kills. That's a scatter of the week. That is a knockup almost, but uh, the kill comes before the horse would even be in the air. It's another clean kill and uh, a good one for the mid laner. Yeah, and this is kind of what I was talking about when I mentioned that Syndra versus Garen, and the reason why the... Uh, the concrete isn't exactly ideal is the fact that you are going to get poked up pretty bad and can't really proc it effectively in lane the argument is it's going to be good outside of lane once you get um a couple items into the later stages but you know in this early game maybe something like the fleet footwork or the grass would be more effective and as such you know harry can just land scatter the weak and never be in any real danger of dying so they're gaining a massive cs lead off of it getting a large health advantage off of it and even though makishima tries to bail out his mid laner he gets punished by the 2v1 right uh the 2v2 lane still pushing for the Legend of Garen mid. There is a big CS lead for this Samira versus Levain, but with the two assists that she's gotten, uh, I don't think Zandia will be all too phased by this. And now the dragon has already been engaged by this very fat Xin Zhao. Ekrim is around to challenge, but uh, I'm not sure if he's there in time. Chooses to go to the bot lane for Zyphir instead. Gets a knockback. Dragon slain. Now they know what's up, but uh, Karma can just walk away. Yeah, this is a, a very tanky Karma. Didn't even have to burn the flash, but here comes uh, Iceland. He's trying to maybe turn this around. Oh, here comes the charge. And so much damage on the initial one. Here comes the knockup. Another kill for Sliny. And that was so easy. He's doing so much damage so early in the game. There's not really anything you could do against it. And the lead keeps growing. Already more than 2,000 gold for the side of Esports Wales. Yeah, they're acting a bit like they want to try and dive this. I don't think they should. Uh, but it is a nice overall play there from the side of Iceland. He does hit that uh, wind becomes lightning there and jumps in aggressively, ends up getting himself a free kill. And overall, we mentioned how the Xin Xiao had to get going early. He was going to be the gank machine. He was the one who had all the CC. And he's done a really good job of capitalizing on that to get these three kills. Yeah, definitely mission accomplished when it comes to the ganks. Four kill participations, not even eight minutes into the game. And uh, once again, I will direct your attention to the mid lane CS lead. This guy not having a fun time whatsoever. Uh, now he gets some E damage off onto Harry, but uh, doesn't look like he cares much. Yeah, having said that though, ju uh, okay, uh, interesting. He, he, was angry. he was angry. He was angry. <laughs> he was asserting dominance. Yeah, it was a zoning cue.
now you know what i'm capable of you better watch out boys <laughs> yeah uh so no gank from the zinjao without the pulverize not enough safe cc to get onto these oh, two this could be a solo kill. yeah this could be the sketch of the week and here comes the unleashed power easy solo kill for i'm just harry and uh maybe he's not just harry uh, at the moment he's a very fed harry right now I feel like if I'm able to identify that as a solo kill, you have to know that there's the potential of the scatter with the weak into Unleash Power combination coming through from Papa. He has to be way more careful of this, and this Garen blind isn't really working out too well. Yeah, 43 CS, two kills. Uh, oh no, look, they're chasing Mashi Mashi Makishima out of his own jungle. Has to use the ultimate to get away, just barely survives this. Oh man, that was too close for comfort. Yeah, I think he was trying for the ultimate damage there from Iceland to maybe get that last hit uh, onto Makishima, but doesn't able to get it in the end, has to burn his flash, and is going to end up getting the Herald out of it, but Jamie... Oh, that was a good never move. Uh, the Alistar with a good flesh headbutt. Goodbye, Swain. Swain is on a rampage. They're chasing up the Samira. The exhaust ensures that no, not enough damage to kill anyone comes out. Two quick kills, and the Herald will be their prize as well. Everything is going their way so far. Seven to zero in kills. Yeah, Esports Wales just turns it around. They're turning on the uh, the afterburners here. Currently 7-0 in kill score and up 3,000 gold. On top of that, going to secure themselves this Herald. And it just feels as though um, the Chronicles of Garen Mid, not really sure what they need to do to try and turn the tempo around and give themselves some advantage. Um, they do have that scaling, maybe, but you know, they need to start making something positive happen. Yeah, and, uh, oh, there could be something positive. That's a Shrima shuffle onto Zyphir, who just walks away from the tower. Ah, not quite fast enough to catch him yet, but the Kama might be tanky, but is she tanky enough to get out of this one? Hecarim is coming from the other side. There come another soldier attack, but he's just walking it out. Now, Makashima is a very fast horse as well, but can he reach the Kama? Doesn't look like it. Oh, another solo kill in the mid lane. While this happens, they do get the return kill. They're on the board. I wonder whether it's possible for Zypher to live here using the flash potentially. However, a nice solo kill does come through from Harry in the mid lane. And I do like the fact that Makishima is there to help out his uh, mid laner, top laner in this is here. I, it's his emperor. Laner. His in emperor. emperor. <laughs> the, the battle pony for for this uh, Shuriman soldier. Um, anyway, but it's nice to see that sort of kill come through. That is kind of what we wanted to see. At least something proactive happening in... Uh, oh, no. this ideal. That's a flash already from Art. Can he survive this? Demacia versus Shurima. And at this time, the Mage Hating Kingdom comes out on top. Iceland is already unstoppable. Ten and a half minutes into the game. The gold lead is more than 3,000. And they've got the dragon to boot with the next one spawning in less than a minute. Yeah, and the Azir ends up just like his city, covered in sand, six feet under. And unfortunately for him, Sliny is just in the right place at the right time again. And you know, credit where credit's due, Sliny has been in the right place at the right time pretty much the entire game. Yeah, uh, here comes another headbutt. Uh, not really enough to do much damage, though. Uh, good for him not to follow up because Hecarim was around the corner. Meanwhile, Azir teleports to the bot lane again, and oh, no. uh, Xin Zhao is still there. This could be another one. Here comes another scatter of the week onto Papa. That doesn't matter much, but here comes the Onslaught of Shadows. That's a double fear. Gets the pushback onto Zandio, flashes away. JME also getting away as fast as he can. Here comes the headbutt. There's a flash hole from Swain, but he gets stunned on the tower and will not get the kill. Yes, he will with the Ignite. It's a one-for-one -one trade, but meanwhile, Art in the bot lane is getting traded on by this Karma. Will fall to Sh Sliny, who's a dominating now. And the Samira will pay the price for the aggression in the top lane as well. Can he get another return kill? No, he cannot. I'm just Terry. Still more than just Terry. Meanwhile, Garen somehow is in the bot lane dying. And it's yeah. four kills across the map. Four whales, I, just sacrificing one. I think Papa teleported towards the bot lane and then instantly got redived after Ard died in the bot side. So, not ideal. It does mean that the first tower is now going to go uh, here to the side of uh, Esports Whales. Got themselves a nice little advantage off of that one. And I feel as though for a second the top fight was going to go slightly badly when Jamie missed the headbutt pulverized timing um, and ended up headbutting Ars Vision over the wall i've done didn't, didn't surviving so it didn't really matter um however what does matter is that we're on almost seven thousand gold lead here currently six thousand oh, at 12 minutes and it's yeah, a double that's... dragon and guess what ocean soul even worse for the blue side composition yeah it, it, it's an absolutely massive lead uh in solo queue this would be an ff15 game for most people um 
But uh, for now, Art trying to stabilize, summoning his own tower in the bot lane, but he's going to get dove again. Xin Zhao is almost doing it alone, just taking some shielding from the Karma. And this is the fifth death for the Emperor of the Sands. Uh, I think he'll want to bury his head in those if this goes on. And Headbutt Pulverize lands in the top lane as well, but not a lethal one for now. I feel as though Art isn't a big fan of this lane swap. Um... <laughs> just wants to play some League of Legends, man. He's like... Oh, there's never gonna be enough damage. It's a three level. I didn't realize there's a three level gap in mid lane. Oh my word. Yeah, it's 60 CS as well. Uh, we're on course to a just over 20 minute flame horizon as well. Ooh. That's rough. Oh no. Oh, and it's so low. Uh, unleash power, just not enough to break through Garen's W, but uh, will force Papa back to, back to Fountain. I think Harry had the Q available, so it might have been a solo kill had he landed that afterwards, but. Uh... Unfortunately, isn't able to connect that one, but it does mean another recoil comes through from Papa, which means more CS bleeding. And I, I have to hope he has the most god tier Garen reflexes in the world to, to come back into this one and be relevant. Uh, come twenty minutes onwards. Yeah. Otherwise, the chronicles of Garen mid are going to end very humiliating in this first game. As of now, uh, Karma in even CS almost with this Azir. Very happy. Uh, very happy lady right now with the Shoriga's battle song already completed. And here comes another attack onto Hecarim. It's a 1v3, but Slyony's legendary kills one. Here come the reinforcement, and he's going to get another one. Double kill. Scatter the weak on two more. It's a triple. And that's the quadra kill for the jungler from Esports Wales. And that was so well executed by him. And we call that a good old-fashioned wallet slapping coming through. However, he might be looking for the pentakill. He's behind the tower. Oh, there comes Australia shuffle flashing over the wall from both of them. Art now walks through his soldiers. Watch me oh. get stunned. Pentakill for Sliney. Yeah, red buff, red smite combination comes through there to get that kill onto Art. And it's a nice pentakill coming through from Sliney. He's looking strong. He's looking confident. And they're going to break down that mid tower and extend their gold lead to almost 10,000. That is one of the biggest leads I have ever seen in Valence League, period, at 15 minutes, if not the biggest, 9,000 gold. Now, can some return kill come through here? This is a very, very tanky Karma, and I don't think Makashima quite has the gold to compete with that. The Grasp of the Undying doing a lot of work. Not quite able to slap him with the wallet as much as the jungler, but uh, still, just walking out menacingly. Yeah, Menace menacingly trots away. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, this is the uh, defensive karma variation. Utility karma, shall we say. Uh, utilizing that Shirelias. So not really any damage that's going to come through. It's more just to make sure that Sliney can absolutely get in, deal tons of damage, and just be an absolute monster. And Currently, when your Xin Zhao is 12, 0, and 3, you can kind of afford to just play to make him even stronger. That's usually a decent strat. Yeah, yeah. Usually getting your extremely fed player some shielding and some movement speed helps. Uh, now let's see uh, what they do. Uh, the the stab misses from Slyony, but they're still in a 2v2 with a very, very fed member. Swain has no way out. Legendary status for the jungler, and Zyphir gets a kill for good measure on the Samira as well. 21 to 2, but they're not done. I'm just Harry, wants to kill the Shirelian Emperor, and is dominating. Death number 7 for the Azir. 22 to 2 in kills. Oh man, they're already dead. Stop yeah, Shuriman, the Shuriman slide and the Shuriman died. There's not much that can be done there in the bot side. In the meantime, Zephyr and Stunny is just an absolute monster. When they, you have this karma to just make your Xin Zhao faster, to lock everyone up, it's just guaranteed. And this is kind of what we talked about earlier when I said, um, you know, if you go towards any of your lanes, Xin Zhao can get himself a couple of kills. And particularly in this top side, because it's a point-and-click CC, you can never really run away with the champions that have been locked in here on the blue side, and it just means that Ice Lion, he can do absolutely anything he wants to in this game. Yeah, you mentioned the low CC in Champion Select, but uh, I don't think we expected that it to go this bad for them uh, without having much CC to peel this Xin Zhao off their players. And speaking of which, Garen has to flash away already. Ragged Reese goes into the Dragon Sands here to try and do something to survive. Here comes Zekrom. Can they die this? They get the shutdown, but it's only the Karma. Everyone else is still alive. And here comes Sliny. There comes the Scatter of the Week. There's the return kill. Sliny's legendary. And uh, Makishima has already sodded off somewhere else after the kill. And now Harold is summoned in the mid lane. They want to capitalize on this one-for-one -one trade. 
I wonder if maybe popping that Shirelius might have been able to keep Zephyr alive a little bit longer, but unfortunately isn't able to pop that one before going down, and... Oh, one shot. Oh, he's just legendary. They dive the tower that just been charged by a Herald. One dead, Papa's dead as well, and they're gonna get Makashima as well with the Unleashed Power. Three more deaths oh, on Oh, Jamie. The... And needs more Cowbell! Dies to the tower! That was a bit too arrogant, but when you're this far ahead, what else can the enemies really do against you? Look at this. Scatter the Week, two-thirds HP of Ragged Breeze, another do, W, another Q, and Terry's legendary as well. Yeah, I think Jamie thought he had a little bit more health in him and ended up just tanking it for fun, ends up going down. But when it's only your Alistar that's falling and that's the fourth kill 18 minutes in, and it's a 27 to 4 kill score, I think you can afford to die once or twice for fun. Uh, they're absolutely in a dominant position here from the side of esports Wales, and they're putting on a clinic in this game, Mike. Yeah, absolute destruction in this first game. Now they're stealing their jungle, they're going to get this ocean dragon, but first, they're diving another tower. They've got the hang of this now. Sliny has to back away a little bit. No, he does not have to back away. He goes and gets Rimia shuffled into the tower, but the karma shielding is big enough to not even make him take any more damage from the tower. They can just do what they want here. Free reign of the map, they think. Here comes Garen over the wall, gets an E, gets exhausted though, so that's not going to be a lot of damage. And Slyny can jump in now. Legendary, one kill to him, one kill to Vayne. And uh, yeah, not much more to say here. They're gonna keep chasing. Can Makashima actually survive this? He can because the reinforcements are here. Here comes Alistar though, Headbutt, Pulverize. And uh, that's enough for the kill for Zandia. Now a Golden Swain has no way to get out of this one. Legendary jungler. Now ASEAN doing everything they can to get something on their ball, but it's a double kill. And everybody's dead on the side of the Chronicles of Garen Mid, and this could already be the end of the game. In reality, this is nothing but a wallet slapping going on at this point. There's not a whole lot that can be done, unfortunately, for the side of the Chronicles of Garen and Mid. And unfortunately, there appears to be a bit of a, uh, a ripped chapter in the book uh, <laughs> yeah. of Garen Mid. And but potentially, some of this will want to be... Uh, Edited out, maybe it's a tipex angle here for this uh, particular page. Um, as a re-engage might come through here from Jamie, but I'm expecting this to just be a given over in here. And... Oh, they are being forced out though. Fair play to the Garen mid chronicles. Um, they are able to push out these members, but remember this ocean dragon is up, meaning soul point is on the table. And I imagine one Baron buff in this game becomes very difficult to play. Yeah, also uh, so something that is the case even with the lead this big, if they could get some picks, they could try to get back into this game. But with the Karma with Shirelias in the game, what can they realistically do? They try to engage, they have not a lot of heart CC. Karma just shields and speeds up everyone, and they run out if they don't feel comfortable taking the fight. The argument would be is that you have to look for picks. You need to try and find someone who's out on their own. I mean, when there is a gold lead that's this big, there's always the chance of someone getting a little bit cocky, getting a little bit arrogant, and as such, getting caught out on their own. However, credit where credit's due, Esports Wales has done a great job of mostly being together and not allowing for those pick scenarios to actually occur. Yeah, and now they're looking for this Baron Nasher, not even bothering with the Ocean Drake. Right. They want to, this game to be over before there Wait. is even a chance for Assault to be happening. Wait, did did I just hear Icelandy's flash go off? Uh, yes, you did. It is on cooldown. Uh, he is fighting three people at the very moment. He's got a Guardian Angel, so he's not really concerned with dying. Gets a Karma Shield, gets a dash into the tower. Arsendian trying to get out. They just donate this kill over to Zypher on this Karma. I think they wanted to get to Zandia, but uh, who is counting at this point? Now, Slinny, still the Guardian Angel available. Gets pushed by the Azir War, but does not give a damn. Double knockup from the headbot. Pulverize. Look at this damage from the Syndra. Double kill goes to JME. And uh, I think, recollect, this time it's really over. Yeah, don't worry. Here comes the Garen. He's going <laughs> to stop all of them. I'm a believer. Well, I doubted him from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, this is an ace. This is going to be the game. Uh, I think this is one of the pages in the book of the Chronicles of Garen Mid that the ancestors, uh, or rather the descendants, don't really talk about. It's like uh, Alesia for the Gauls, or the 7-1 for the Brazilians. This is one to forget for the Chronicles. Clinic put on by Esports Wales. They have Esports Wales doing absolutely everything right in this one. And I think the big talking point here would have to to be that lane swap strategy that came through right because it, it seemed as though they had something clever planned some sort of counter um, idea that we weren't aware of but it just sort of fell apart yeah and it fell apart below the five minute mark with with a dive on the azir and then art teleports to lane zinjao is still there he dies again this is already just set them so far behind 
And uh, you mentioned the matchup of Garen versus Syndra, and we saw exactly why you said it was not a good idea. Uh, he didn't have anything to do in that lane, and whenever Xin Zhao came around, there also happened to be a kill for Harry. He got so fed on this Syndra that only his Scatter the Week took more than 50% of his Squishy's health bar uh, at the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, the biggest point in that situation is just look at the level difference here at the end of the game. Four level gap here for I'm just Harry over his laner. Six levels above the enemy support. I mean, Ouch. at that point, at that point, Syndra can breathe on you and you'll get one shot from full HP. It's it's really difficult to deal with. And this is kind of why Syndra is, great, is fine into Garen is the fact that he has to run at you just in a straight line. There is no tricks. There is no yeah. smart outplays he can make. He just has to run at you. So you just hold the scatter of the week. You hit that once and then face rush disengage and you're fine for the entire lane. Yeah, I mean, you could try to dodge the scatter with with Garen Q's move speed, but uh, Scatter the Week just has such a wide hitbox that it's almost impossible if the Syndra knows what they're doing. Uh, one last highlight for this game I want to throw is onto Slenny or Slenny. 20, 0, and 10, including a pentakill. Absolute domination from the Xin Zhao player here. Yeah, there would only be one question I would have to ask um, back after seeing this kind of performance. Um, is Xin Zhao getting banned? I mean, is the answer yes or is the answer yes? Uh, I sure hope it's yes for the sake of the series, because if this happens again, uh, we're going to be done very, very soon here. Uh, but for now, we're not done. It's a 1-0 in a best of three matchup. So we're going to see these two teams play again in just a couple of minutes. Do not touch your browser.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Valence League's Division 2. We just saw an absolute thrashing eSports Wales woke up and chose violence today. I'm still Mortager. I'm still with Recollect, and I hope this second game is going to be a bit closer for the Chronicles of Garen Midsake. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the nicest sort of situation to watch play out. It felt as though pretty much every single member had advantage over the side of eSports Wales, and usually in losses you you say oh it's fine don't worry guys they we had advantage here it meant that our bot lane looked really good or we had a winning top side but in reality every single lane lost and it was just a question of which lane lost the hardest yeah and uh, i i want to see two things this game especially from the chronicles of Garen mid and that is uh firstly a zinjao ban and uh secondly no no azir bot please yeah, I mean, the big, that was the big question mark to begin with, right? It was that fact that they were willing to try out this new strategy. And there is a reason as to why people aren't doing that strategy. And I did discuss it sort of in the game, the fact that the tower doesn't take anywhere near as much damage. And also the fact that you are isolating a member that is going to have a harder time dealing with these dives than you yours will. Because think about the fact that Karma versus Azir, Azir is going to have a much harder time dealing with an Alistar engage than Karma will as a, a Swain. Combine that with a dive potential, and it just feels like that you know, the Alistar base type is going to be significantly easier to execute on. All right, then we already see the first adaptation here, the Karma ban uh, from uh, the side of the Chronicles of Garamid, and the Zinjao joins Karma on the bench. Yeah, I kind of like that, to be honest with you. Both of these were problem matchups, and I think that's why we saw this Garen pivot away from the Karma, because it was such a difficult matchup. However, I don't really want to see this Garen blind again. It doesn't look like the best situation in the world. I mean, it's not really a blind pickable champion. Um, there are some matchups that can heavily... Well... <laughs> it's Garen blind pick, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on the other can side... I, have... <laughs> can I come back in like 30 minutes? Is that an option? Like, that, I'll, I'll, meet, I'll think, be back. I'll be back. Do you really think the cast. game's going to take that long? I mean, it did last time somehow. Until about like 20, 25 minutes or so. Um... I don't know. I, 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 it depends on whether or not Sintra just gets locked in here, and then um, another Garen top lane counter comes through as well, and then Garen just cries, uh, cries in Demacia. We will see. <laughs> Maybe this is a Viego counter pick here from the Garen, and it's not going to be Viego jungle and just make this um, yeah, horrible I, situation. I think it's going to be Viego jungle. Uh, last week we saw them play a couple of junglers. <sighs> First they played the Zinjao, then that was banned. Then they played the Volibear, then that was banned as well, and then they played the Viego. So. Uh... All right, then Blitzcrank it is. That is an exciting pick. I always like Blitzcranks being in games. I kind of just want Harry to lock in Cinder again here, just with the idea that if you don't pick it here, it's going to be banned away in the next two phases. Then this guy can go mid again, potentially, um, unless you have something else you want to play into it. Um, off the top of my head, there are definitely a few things you can pile into it. However, we're going to instead see this Trisana, which can be okay into the Garen whilst also being a flex between the mid and AD carry positions. However, I am expecting it to go to that AD carry position. Yeah, huge rage advantage over the vein. Uh, going to be having a quite easy time farming uh, after the first few levels when the range kicks in from the Tristana passive and uh, has enough of an explosive potential with the Blitzcrank to blow someone up that gets hooked. Yes, we'll have to see whether or not that explosive potential to come through and on the subject of explosive we have the diana diana known to be a very powerful jungler here especially considering the fact that the current magic damage pool within the jungle is quite limited which makes her a, a very uh s to a tier uh, level champion yes and you prophesized the syndra being banned if not picked and here we go syndra's gone joining galio on the bench of banned champions one more for each team and uh if they're being consequential they also banned the alistar now yeah, I mean, the fact that we see about three members of the previous roster already banned away in terms of the champions locked in is quite interesting. I would definitely... Uh, and one of them being picked away, so it is just that Alistar that's currently uh, not been mentioned, shall we say. And I think, honestly, JME had an okay performance in the Alistar. It wasn't the best, but he did do a couple of um, nice engages and showed some solid uh, understanding of the champion. However, Alistar isn't exactly the best thing um, to lock in here into Blitzcrank because you can jump buffer out of the uh, out of the, the Hippo Pulverize with the rocket jump from Tristana. Alright, here is the Fiora locked in for the top lane. An interesting pick here. I mean, it could technically still be mid, but uh, if they're staying to, to their name, they put the Garen mid again. Uh, this lock in also means, though, that now that uh, the esports whales know that the solo laners are going to be Fiora and Garen, uh, which is an interesting prospect as they both 
uh, their soul lamers are able to be picked now, and uh, they will be able to choose who to pick where, and it's the Gwen, probably for top lane. The most interesting aspect as well is the fact that Mikishima is known to be a Fiora player, but he's been playing in the jungle, so unless they're planning on actually role swapping for this series, it would be odd to see this Fiora piloted by anyone else. And uh, Fiora is known to be a decent matchup into this Gwen as well. Um, it is skill-based, but I would say it's slightly Fiora favored. However, it is harder to execute on out of the two champions. And the Callista comes through, so we do see that Tristana mid-pivot come through into this uh, Garen mid, like we kind of thought it might be. Yeah, uh... No matter uh, who they put mid, who they put top, Tristana will be able to uh, go into a melee matchup. Easy choice then, uh, in their opinion, to pick the Kalista along with the Blitzcrank. A very potent combination, of course, especially in the early game. Uh, do you think Zyra is uh, a good answer against this Kalista Blitzcrank uh, lane? It's not the worst thing in the world, but it isn't exactly great. I'm not going to lie to you. It, the, the problem is, is that both of these champions now on this red side bot lane very squishy and are going to die immediately if they get hooked from level 2 onwards as a hook into that Rocket Fist knockup. Uh, will be more than enough damage paired with this Q-Max Callista um, to just blow someone up from pretty much full health. So it, it's not exactly the best, but if you can play a neutral lane, it does give you the poke-based advantage, and as such, you can maybe win by pairing, uh, trying to play a poke uh, lane condition and try and win through that right then um i'm still a little bit struggling to see the chronicles of garen mid's win condition here they could try to get the vein online but as a vein you kind of want to team fight don't you the garen and fiora both seem to be split pushy champions so uh and i'm still struggling to see what they want to do against the other side's comp uh they do have some good things going for them. The Diana and Zara are both very potent and blowing up squishies, and there's not really something not 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 really something tanky on the other side yet. Uh, how do they want to approach these team fights then? It's a difficult one to really decide on, to be honest with you, because as you said, when this Fiora is online, she's wanting to stay in a side lane and create an isolated situation, and Garen can do the same. Obviously, I think the Tristana can do a pretty good job into the Garen to disengage and chunk through him once he gets that Lord Dominic's regard online. Um, having said that, though. It's not impossible for them to win team fights. I just think it's too difficult because the problem is there's so much zoning potential here available when you think about um, something like this Callista Blitzcrank combo. And also, there's just too much raw damage and no major engage tools on this red side composition. I mean, you're relying way too heavily on a Diana Moonfall landing onto five people and then following up with the Stranglethorns. And in reality, that might happen once, but it's not a consistent situation. You might catch one or two, consistently with a Diana ult, but catching five over and over again isn't something you can rely on. And as such, I think we need to talk about the types of fights these teams want. If you are going to play out a team fight for the red side and blue side, then the blue side wants a very controlled fight in which Tristana can free hit, where Callista can jump around, and you know, Viego and Gwen can be nightmares in the back line. Whereas this red side, they want to create smaller skirmishes, maybe some 1v1s and 2v2s around um, a team fight where not everyone is focusing each other, but it allows this Fiora to go uh, ballistic on the 1v1s, where Diana can land onto a 2 and then you know, Zonia's install the time, and Vayne can just go ballistic with no one really being able to lock her up. So you've got to keep an eye out for those smaller, um, very split up fights here for this red side composition to have any real chance of winning. Yeah, alright. Def definitely looks to be one of the few avenues. Uh, but one other thing you mentioned is uh, Makishima being uh, a Fiora player they are keeping the Fiora, so the question is going to be, do they take the Fiora to the jungle, or are they actually role sw swapping, putting Papa on the Diana in the jungle, and the Fiora goes into a solo lane piloted by uh, Makishima, who jungled the first game? Yeah, my assumption is going to be that it's going to be Makishima just piloting it in one of the solo lanes, probably actually um, going to see that in the um, in the top lane, and then we have seen the fact that you know Ard was willing to play on the side lanes last time, but he is more of a um, he can play the mid lane, so I'd be more surprised if we see the uh, Garen go top this time around. So I'm expecting it'll be the Diana jungle, the Fiora in the top side, and then that uh, Garen mid, which this team is known for here into that Tristana matchup, which is going to be tough no matter what you play into the Tristana. Yeah, an additional detail that I've just noticed, you, you mentioned they are wanting to rely on these big engages, these big combos, uh, where they hit everyone with their CC and just uh, burst them down. Problem with this is basically everyone on Esports Wells composition, except for the Blitzcrank, has an ability that moves them out of uh, out of the Moonfall circle, right? Or the 
the Stranglethorn Circle as well. And Blitzcrank has a speed up as well. So going to be very, very tough for them to lock multiple members down with these big abilities without uh, landing some other CC first. And they don't have exactly a lot of it to go around with Garen and Fiora and their team. It's actually going to be Fiora Jungle. Okay. I have never seen a Fiora Jungle before. I will not lie to you. <laughs> I, I saw and it I in like season of, two. I think it's for good reason that I haven't seen a Fiora Jungle in a while. Um, I don't think it's good. But I am excited to see if maybe there's some sort of secret strategy here that I'm not aware of. Um... Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, lights are on and Summoner's Rift. Uh, we're about to be paused to 10 seconds for synchronization purposes. Uh, syncing up with production as we are all hopefully paused to 10 seconds now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And we're live on Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen, for game two between Esports Wales, ya yeah, or whatever, however you pronounce that last uh, word in their name, and the Chronicles of Garenmid, who received a thrashing in game one, and uh, now Esports Wales seem to have a plan for this level one. Yep, you know the rules, and so do I. Solo queue rule number three, if there's a Blitzcrank, you must invade as Blitzcrank team. <laughs> so, we're going to see JME trying for something a little bit cheeky here, but I doubt... Anyone who falls for this deserves to be reported. Oh no, they're going to fall for it. There's, they've got no one standing there. They don't know yet. Oh no. But it, it's, it's, this is something that even solo queue players know. You understand that if the enemy team has Blitzcrank, they're probably going to invade you. Oh no, Papa. Here they come. Oh, Papa now he's saw so them. lucky. Now he saw them, but they didn't see him. He's running away as fast as his uh, moon-crested legs will take him. And now they know, again, it has been a red buff invade. They did that in game one as well. They got this... Oh, wait, they did that in game one. They got this at back then. But uh, for now, oh, it no. seems like the invade is going to be successful. Art is going to try and check. No, he just walks past them. Now he checks, puts on the ward in the brush, but it gets deleted. 10 gold for Zypher, and they're going to take this red buff away. Now, this is interesting to me, though, because... Art has used his ward now on the top side, and it's known by Slinny, so there's a chance that you can do something like this red buff, pilot that into the raptors, and then go straight towards the top lane, create vertical jungling, and there's going to be no ward available here for Art to watch the gank out. Alright, Smite used on the red buff. Uh, it looks like he's pathing away from that, walking over the ward in the pixel brush, so now the Chronicles of Garen mid will have knowledge on, uh, of this. Betraying their own name this time as the Garen is walking towards the top lane and Papa is playing the Diana in the middle lane, at, opposite the Tristana. Look at the map though, look at this red buff situation that's going on. Makishima went to invade that one early, it's going to get spotted out here by Sliney. And he's only on 200 and a bit HP, Sliney is going to get this. That's less than 50 smite from Mak Makishima, comes out early, but this blue buff is not going to be a challenge for the Viego with the red buff. It's first blood once again. Forest line and now Papa is being chased away by Andrew Terry. He jumps forward, gets the Eon. The Rascone's not going to save him. Boom goes the dynamite. I'm just Harry with the solo kill. Yeah, Harry flashes to reposition on the blast cone to make sure they both go to the same direction. I love the little adjustment that came through. Art. Nothing happening there. It is just a Garen. Um but yeah, honestly, it's a nice adaptation here from the side of Slyne. He invades the red buff and immediately goes red to red to make sure that he can't have his stolen in response. And Makishima on this Fiora can't really clear that quickly. As such, gets punished by that um, rotation change and doesn't have Pryo to help himself out either. So ends up going down. That's two kills already. We've seen what Wales can do when they have an advantage. Yeah, and Zypher is just snipping away onto Art's HP pool, of course, as the Garni is going to heal up, but uh, no lane priority as one of the most earliest games champions in the world, in, in the game. So uh, not a good look for now for the Chronicles of Garen, I guess, top this game. Yeah, definitely a bit of a rough situation, but I really think this is oh, where we no. need to be looking. Yeah, he's going to go again, level three versus level two. Look at this bomb explode. P Papa just came to lane and now he's already down to 300 HP. Yeah, and I feel like every single time that bomb is up, it's going to be a jump forward from Harry. He's going to be punishing, and look at the summoner spell as well. Papa is the one who's running the Ignite, so he's the one that needs to be gaining advantage early on. Harry has himself the teleport. He can afford to take bad trades, come back, and then be further ahead due to the amount of resources that were burned by Papa in that trade. Yeah, uh, I think it's a bit of an odd choice anyway to put 
uh, about Diana against the Tristana fall the other game. Of course, sure, uh, Garen's not going to have much of a better time, right? Uh, but Diana at least can have lethal threat with level 6 if she hits a Q on the Tristana. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Garen can just walk up to you. Tristana just jumps away and that's fine. But with Diana, it's a little bit different. But if she gets oh put so behind the other game, there lands a hook. It's good damage. Good condemn though by Arsviand. And yeah, here's another jump. Another 400 HP taken away. I like this from Sunny. It's just paying pay attention in case Ard goes aggressively here onto Zephyr. I don't think that this Garen will end up doing so. However, in the mid lane, but all corrupting plot stacks have been burnt here from Papa, so there's no more regen available for this Diana. Not running that fleet footwork for that lane safety that you would normally see into Tristana. However, the gank in the top side might happen. Judgment activated, but here comes Sliny. It's a 1v2. Ard flashes away. The Ignite is on him. Can they get it done? Yes, they can. Another kill for Sliny, this time on the Viego. He transforms into Garen to show him how it's done. And another easy kill for Esports Wales, who once again are 2,000 gold ahead by the five minute mark. Yeah, they're just running away with this game. It doesn't even look hard for them. And there's a teleport here in the top side, channeled by Ard, which means to me that there could be a potential um, regank in a couple of minutes here from Sliny, or potentially a play on the bot side. However, Nakishimo is already there looking for these Krugs, which means to me that these junglers might end up um, fighting it out on the bot side in a couple of minutes. Yeah, but, but look at the CS in the jungle. Uh, as you mentioned, Fiora is not a champion that clears the jungle very quickly in the early game. Uh, despite uh, Sliny having ganked the top lane, uh, almost double the CS in the jungle. As a root lands here, Zanya goes aggressive now. Fiora is behind them. This could go bad. Uh, exhaust has been on. Ignite is on. Zanya gets a kill first, though. Will pay for that with his life. The kill goes to Makishima. But Sliny is here as well. They're going to get Ragged Reese, and it's two for one in the bot lane for esports Wales. Yeah, I like the punish there from the side of Wales. It's a good attempt there to try and catch out um, this Kalista, but the invade without priority is never going to be a great situation here from the side of Makishima. And even though I think it's a mistake from Zander to go a bit too aggressively and not just turn around to try and kill Makishima, um, there is also available here for Ard. They could look for solo kill. Yeah, the Demacian Justice is available, but I'm just Harry is right behind him. He gets the silence with the Q, but Zypher just walks away and the tower shots will take care of the rest. Harry with that buster shot, making sure there's no chance of Art activating that R bottom. And it's another kill for the solo laners. And uh, I'm just Harry, 2 0 once again. He's still more than double Papa's CS. This is an absolute slaughter once again so far. 3,000 gold now. Yeah, I love the usage of the Buster shot there. The idea being to create distance so there's no chance of the Damascian Justice coming down to try and catch out um, Zephyr here on this Gwen. And as such, it means that Art can never really close the distance and can't really get the kill. And on the subject of closing the distance, there might be a play here in the mid lane. Yeah, Viego is behind the Diana as the spectator camera concentrates on the bot lane. But now here we come. Sliny comes in. Harry jumps forward. Flash away from Papa. Can he get the survival? No, he cannot. He gets stunned under his own tower. Sliny's on a rampage as he transforms into the corpse. And that's a Brazil versus Germany result for now. 7 to 1. <laughs> it hurts even more when the German is the one saying it. Uh, I love the fact that... They are going for these ganks, but I feel as though it's just a mistake from Papa. They're not hovering the ward side that you have. Had that one in the top side, isn't showing that level of respect though. Hovers the center and as such gets punished by this jumping forward Tristana and Zviego from the bot side. All right then, Makishima could be in a bit of trouble here. There's three enemy champions around this Fiora. Uh, all of them can get to her faster than the Garen. And here comes the engage. Slyne doesn't have a lot of HP, so he's not the one going first. Now, Papa is here to support his jungler, and it does seem like they could all get out of this. Harry wants it, though. Jumps forward, flashes out, gets ignited. Papa will get the shutdown. That was over-aggression from Esports Wales. Papa, can he survive this? No, he cannot. Get stunned by Slyne, who is unstoppable. It's a one-for-one. -one. It's a one-for-one, -one, but it's a shutdown onto the Tristana, so advantage gained there from the Chronicles of Garen. And as such, you're going to be pretty happy to get that onto yourself. However, it is only a minor advantage. There's still a massive kill difference, and most importantly uh, is the fact that no one has been able to take this dragon just yet, which means that the game is going to go later and later, which realistically is going to benefit this Tristana more and more. All right, then. No hooks at the moment, but another invade here. Makashima has been invaded by Slyny, already almost dead. And that is a dominating Viego. 6-0 in the jungle. 
uh, as we said, he woke up today and chose violence, and he's not slowing down at all so far. Yeah, Double not... the CS as well. Yeah, I'm not feeling the Fiora jungle. I won't like it. <laughs> feels... so, so the reason oh, no. why I say that Fiora jungle just isn't good is I'm 90% sure that vitals just don't proc on jungle camps. No, they do not. Which means you're not getting that much extra damage. The only advantage you're gaining is that your Q goes down a little bit of cooldown when you hit it on something. But realistically, that means the damage you're gaining is pretty low at the early game. And as such, you're kind of relying on getting a bit later. Harry? Oh, Harry jumps forward, gets pulled in by the Moonfall, though. Gets the Buster Shot. One more auto would do it, but Papa is the one who attacks first. The Moonblade slices through Tristana, and it's a solo kill for Papa for the first time in this series. And I think that might have been a mistake there from Harry, because I think there was a W reset available. Oh, no. Oh, they're not stopping. Their Lancer route onto Zandia, who will fall. Two Ragged Reese. Can they get the Blitzcrank as well? They're looking for the dive. Makashima takes two oh. tar shots. There's two tar shots. Takes the ignite. The W will not save him. Jamie gets the return kill. Here comes the teleport. Cypher has slain Ragged Reese. There's a two for one. They got something, and they immediately went overly aggressive and got punished. Now, the Herald has been summoned by Arden in the top lane. That's a lot of plates, a lot of gold for this Garen, so gold positive the play was for them, but it could have been much better. Yeah, I have to wonder about the overaggression there, because what is the thought process? You know the Blitzcrank still has his ultimate and the Ignite available, so all that's going to happen is if you try and die, if he ults and silences you, and then you're just doomed. There's no way you can live as a side of Mikishima. There's no way to outplay it. You're just going to die, and as such, it just ends up dying horribly, and Ragged Reese tries to help out and just dies along with his jumper. Yeah, uh, credit to them. With the help of the Herald, Art has taken the first tower. Uh, though Harry is not far away from taking the first tower himself. Again, Papa is more than 40 CS behind at the 11 minute mark. I know it's a ranged versus melee matchup, but this still is a big, big gap. Speaking of big gaps, Makashima is being attacked by Blitzcrank and Viego gets hooked in, gets stunned, gets killed. Slinny is godlike. Yep, even though there's a knock-up onto a Krug there, it doesn't really matter. As Mikishima can't really avoid that situation, ends up dying, and it's just the Slimy Show. The entire game has just been the Slimy Show. He's 7-0 and on this Viego, got himself that Divine Sundra, and is massively ahead. Oh, I, this is just, that's mean. That's mean in the top side. Oh, no. Oh, Harry jumps forward again. This time, he will get punished without much recourse. Ah, takes the kill with his ultimate. Not really sure if that was necessary, but they do get the kill in the mid lane. This game, at least, they're doing something, right? It's an improvement. It's only 4,000 gold at 12 minutes. Oh, they could get more here. It's a 2v1, but Jamie is pretty low art. Now, if you hadn't used the ultimate in the mid lane, you probably would have killed the Blitzcrank here, but he just dies in the 3v1 now. No, Slidey goes forward. Flash, Garen Q, and here comes the attack onto Papa. They're not relenting. They're not slowing down. Slidey is legendary. 9-0 at yeah, 12 minutes. Yeah, he's looking for a 30 KDA across this series. That would be ridiculous to me to watch out. Wait, it, no, he it, had a 30 in the first game. I think he's, he, he's close to 40. A 30 KD, sorry. KD, KD, oh, KD. Yeah, 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 yeah. KD, KD. Uh, I mean, yeah, technically, it's an infinite KD, right? Because he hasn't died yet. True. Uh, but even then, um, the, the biggest problem here is from the fact that, oh, Art is fighting again. Well, that is a judgment. That's a lot of damage onto Zypher, who put the Ignite on the Garen, but is still losing the trade. Uses the ultimate as well, but misses the second shot. Uh, this is advantage Art here, but there's two enemies more behind the lines. Slimy's legendary. There's the 40 KDA across these two games. While technically being infinite, it's 40 kills, zero, 40 kills or assists, zero deaths. Oh boy, this 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 feels like a, an unranked to challenger stream right now. It's definitely a rough one to watch. I mean, it, it's uh, it's not ideal. I will not lie. Uh, there is a couple of shining lights here on the red side, though, and that's the fact that. I'm just Harry is jumping in quite aggressively without vision, so there's always a chance of picking him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no! Uh, Zandia uh, says, thank you for the leash on that Grom, 90 gold in my pocket. Yeah, and it goes from bad to worse too, because the next dragon's going to be a Cloud Drake, which means that you're going to guaranteeing Infernal or Ocean Soul onto this comp. Oh, Makishima. 
They're going forward once again. Makishima trying his damnedest, and they do get the shutdown onto the Viego. First death of the series. Double kill even for the Vayne. They keep going. Flash forward. Zandia no trouble. He's against three people. Can he live this? He flashed away. He cannot live. It's a triple kill for Arsri. And, and finally, something goes really, really right for the Chronicles of Garen Med. And the big factor there is the fact that Reese ends up blocking up. There is a fight between top laners here on the top side. Uh, however, yeah, it's just the fact that Ragged Reese is able to land that root onto uh, Sliney, lock him up, and means that he can't move and just takes tons of damage and gets blown up because look at this Viego build. He does have the Vine Sundra, but he's not actually that tanky. Only the Sterex really now completing the Steel Caps to help with that lack of um, tankiness, but he gets blown up instantly, and it means that it's just a triple kill opportunity here for this Vayne. Yeah, uh, okay, from now on, Sliney, every, uh, the next death is going to halve your KDA. So you better not die again if you want to keep the high numbers up and not go down to rookie numbers. Ard is standing on a ward here. And uh, we could have a disconnect here. And there it is, the pause. <laughs> we don't even have a mid laner. Oh, no. All right, then. Uh, we can take toll here at 14 minutes and 43 seconds. The gold lead is just over 4,000. Uh, so it's a lot closer than it was last game, as weird as that sounds to say. What is the cause back into the game? for the Chronicles of Garen mid. They do have gotten a triple kill on the vein, but uh, how do they approach this now? It's still really difficult, right? Because they don't actually have any chain CC. The best thing they can do is try to just um, look for some sort of kick against this blue side composition. However, the blue side composition is specialized in picking themselves. So it's whoever ends up assassinating a member before this dragon is going to end up winning the drake for themselves. So look for a potential uh, place here from Ragged Reese to lock them up using those Strangle Thorns as well as those Tangle Barb. Uh, Tangle Bob, sorry, um, the Grasping Roots, and then uh, maybe some sort of Moonfall Engage coming through from Papa uh, onto a stray member. Something like this can maybe get an explosion here because this blue side composition is very squishy in their key members. I'm just Harry, whilst will have a lot of range, doesn't have the Buster Shot available just yet, and as such can get blown up pretty easily. And the same is true as well for Sandia. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Dragon is really the only one with any long range CC on the side of Garen mid. Like, Garen, what's he gonna do? Look at you? Fiora, what's she gonna do? Uh, speak French at you? Diana has to jump in to get any CC going and fully commit, and uh, yeah, the, the vein can condemn people, but uh, gonna be a really rough one. They need Ragged Race to, to, to pull out all the rags uh, for them. Yeah, usually if you're engaging with Vayne Condemn, something has gone horribly wrong with yeah. your uh, your team fight or just your composition in general, which, you know, an argument could be made that there is some fundamental issues with the red side composition. I'm not going to say more than that on that aspect, though. Um, however, you know, there is still options. They are within enough of a gold situation. They can fight back. And when you look at the way that the kill gold and current gold is, there's... A 4,000 gold lead in the jungle matchup, but that's it. So if you can lock down Sliney in this sort of situation, there's definitely a possibility that you can win team fights. So just keep an eye on Sliney and see if he doesn't get blown up. Yeah, we, we currently have that uh, spectator client bug that after pauses, we get a short uh, second pause. Uh, I'm sure that is going to be, be resolved any second as the dragon is alive and the teams are positioning around it. Uh, Tristana still in the top lane. Harry doesn't have the teleport available, so for now it's a five v four, which could benefit uh, the Chronicles of Garen mid. For now, they're not landing any CC though, and Art gets hooked in by the Blitzcrank, gets himself out just a little while. But Zyphir comes from the flank. Look at that damage from the Gwen, and already three members have died. The Stranglethorns just for the knockup, just to look cool for the enemy team, actually. This dragon will fall to esports Wales. It's a 4v5, but it doesn't matter. Excellent damage comes through from Zephyr, blowing every single member up. And it means that Harry was able to just push out the mid wave and is now threatening to maybe look for this mid tower on his own using that bomb. However, Jamie. Oh, oh no, the hot lands. Jamie gets some tower shots, but it doesn't matter. Zandia will get the kill credit onto Arsvi and. And there comes some mastery flash from Jamie. This split strength has been working phenomenally outside of the lane, especially. And now they're going to be pushing down the mid lane. Yeah, Jamie lands a fantastic hook there. It's a free kill onto your vein. And at the moment, it feels as though the esports Wales were starting to lose control. They were starting to make a couple of mistakes, and it felt very scary. Oh, do it again, Jamie. 
Yeah, now they've taken the controller back from the little brother. They're playing themselves again. The hook misses here, and that means Makashima survives. Can they get anything in the counter-attack? Blitztrank has no mana. Moonfall pulls in two, gets one kill, and they could get another one. Yes, and it's a killing spree for Zypher. Meanwhile, it's a two for one so far. Anything else going on? I see no flank moves happening. No one has teleport available, so it looks like everyone's going to disengage here. Yep, nothing too major happening, but look, Ragged oh. Reese is looking. Sliney is still looking for Ragged Reese. Who's caught? Who here? Sliney going forward. Oh, one HP on the Zyra, but now Sliney's very far forward against multiple people. Gets some existent assistance from Zandia, but will die. It's another shutdown to the vein, and they will get Zandia again. Esports Wills overextending for the second time, and for the second time, all the kills come to vein. Now, Tristana teleported in. From the backside, it's going to be a 2v2, and this is a scary one for the side of Garamid Asfian, doing everything he can, pulling out all the auto attacks here, but his top lane is already dead, and now he falls as well. Zyphia's on a rampage, a double kill for the Gwen, 5-0-6. Poor Makishima. Oh no, we're not done. Makishima thinks he can match up against two of them. They get the kill onto the Gwen, actually. Here comes Diana with a shutdown. Harry doesn't have enough yet, jumps in against two, not sure why he's doing that. Here comes a hex smash from Blitzkrank, knock up, and it's a kill. Reset now coming in for the Trisana. Jumps over the wall to get away from the Diana. Can they get the kill? The Ignite is on. The shield comes on. Harry walks around the corner, sees the Zyra, and turns tail. Yep, absolutely. A nice little uh, re engage here coming through from JME and Harry. They end up getting themselves another kill on the backside. And again, Ragged Freeze is playing very aggressively here. Might get caught out. Yeah, they're staying again. Here comes the Blitzcrank Hulk. This is a death sentence in the true sense of the word. And that is another kill for I'm Just Terror, despite the Ignite from Ragged Reese. They do always seem to find a way to get more gold into their pocket, even when something goes wrong. Yeah, that is the big factor, right? Esports Wales, even if the play doesn't work out for them originally, they end up getting more gold than they would have got, uh, than their opponents would have got, because the, originally it was about 4,000 gold before the dragon, now already increased up to 7,000 at 18 minutes. With this Herald trying to get even more gold, maybe going to go for that top lane tower to guarantee, you know, that little bit of extra... Um, easy money. Maybe they'll use this one to push out the mid lane and look for the soul point dragon. However, Art... Well, Art tries to challenge this, but the smite has already come through for Sliny, and now Art is in a 1v2. Can at least get the Blitzcrank. He seems to be trying to do that, but falls before he can. Now Sliny has transformed into the crown guardian of Demacia, trying to find more members of uh, the Chronicles of Garamid. Doesn't seem to be finding them for now. But they're deep in enemy territory. This could go very bad for them or for the others. And he's found Makashima once again. This Fiora jungle, not a success story so far. BBK, uh, Jamie is trying, uh, going in to help his jungler. And I don't think Makashima has any way out despite having Flash. And here comes a Flash Dash to get out. Actually, his team's there to support. But what can they really do? That's a good double route from Ragged Reese. But they keep the dive going. Makashima still being dived by Slimey. That has just gone too far. And they do get the kill onto Zyra, but the Viego dies in return. It's a two for one for Red Side. And that's another double kill for the Vayne. Another overextension. And now the KDA is truly ruined. Already three deaths for Slimey. Meanwhile, Zypher takes the bot lane tower. As we said before, whenever something goes wrong, they still get gold somehow. Yeah, the big factor there in that sort of play is the fact that JME decides to use that knockup onto Bakishima, which allows him to repost and stun Sliny, which gives him a way out. It's the only possible way he can escape. Um, and in fact, it's a situation where if the Blitzcrank did nothing, it would have been better for his jungler. Um, having said that, though, Sliny goes a bit too aggressively, wanting that extra kill, gets punished, and suddenly this Vayne gets to come online now 7-3. and three, And you see there might be a potential win condition coming uh, into fruition here on the bot side. Yeah, that is a strong vein. Two and a half items at the very moment. Dragon about to spawn in 20 seconds, and I do believe that the Chronicles of Garamid do not want to give this one up. A Herald has been summoned top lane to dissuade some attention from this dragon uh, to bring some of it to the top lane, but uh, it looks like they're trying to kill this dragon on spawn, and it looks like Esports Wells are willing to give this one up, seeing as they got two of their own already. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a nice opportunity here for the side of Garen Mid to try and get this one early. Deny that soul coming on online a little bit earlier. I'll have a look at the potential Baron trade that's coming through here on the top side. Yeah, they're, they're already engaged on it. Uh, the Herald still pulling attention from the other team. And uh, with that pink ward in the pit, I don't know if they're aware of it, but they choose to go towards this top side. The tower has been killed by the Herald, and now Ard has been killed by I'm Just Harry. That was the freest kill I've seen uh, in a long time. <laughs> he just tries to defend a tower from a herald with no knowledge of where the enemy team is. Big mistake there from the top lane of the Garen Chronicles. 
And now it's a 5v4 push, actually a 5v3 push in the top lane as Fiora just recalled to the base from the bottom side of the map. They did get their Ocean Dragon, but what will it cost them in the long run? Yeah, I'd kind of like to see the players pivot towards this Baron and try and threaten that one, maybe with the intention of turning with the Blitzcrank hook. Um, but they're not doing that as yet, just instead sieging this tower. But their siege isn't exactly the greatest, so this is why I'm saying maybe pivot away, go towards that Baron and utilize that Death Timer a bit more effectively, but Ard is already up now, he's going to be on the map. Yeah, we're still very early in the game, the Death Timer is not that long. Here comes another hook onto Papa! The Stranglethorns trying to save him, the go going Golden has saved him for now, flash out after the Stranglethorns. Here comes the Needlework, but not looking like that can be enough damage to get the kill. Uh, that is good on surviving needlework, doing some damage to Makashima, but not enough to really threaten something. They still want this tower, they're using the Tristana bomb to do a lot of damage to it. Um, but still not turning towards Baron, and now they're trying for the dive between the towers. Asking that has to pop the ultimate to go invisible to stay alive. And for now, no one dead. Yeah, but the problem is nothing is really happening here. They are getting a bit of chunk onto the tower, uh, but it's very slow and everyone is losing out on a potential solo XP held oh, on the no. bot lane. Uh, he'll be fine. Um, look at the potential bot lane uh, wave that is slowly but surely being denied here for the red side, though. That is the advantage that's being gained mostly uh, by having so many members stay on the top side. Yeah, and here they go. Baron engaged, of course, with two AD carries and one of them being Kalista. It's almost impossible to steal this Baron from the other side. And it looks like the Chronicles of Garen, but aren't even trying. The Baron's already below 4,000 4, HP. And there it is. It's picked up by Esports Wales. And here comes the Baron Power Play, not sponsored by Red Bull not sponsored by red bull in fact you're absolutely right and i feel as though this game is now very much in the control of esports wales it's been shaky for a little while with a 10,000 gold lead with the baron buff you have to feel as though they're starting to gain a bit more control however this dragon isn't going to spawn at exactly the most optimal time as their baron will start to expire around the time of its spawn yeah um th the funny thing is there's still almost 10,000 gold up at the 23 minute mark and uh, we feel a bit as if it's not as much as last game, just because of how bad yeah. last game went. It's still a 10,000 gold lead at 23 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. That is an absolute stomp in every sense of the word. And yet we're still not as excited <laughs> because they've just topped themselves in the game before. The problem is, is that it doesn't feel clean. You know, they've got themselves this gold lead, but it feels as though they're going purely off of mechanics and not necessarily off of solid macro, and as such, it feels at least to me, like there's a chance of someone getting a bit too far forward and getting caught out. Yeah, as you mentioned that, Zafir, Zafir is against three people. He gets the solo kill on Ard, though. Can he do any more? Go, uh, uh, Makishima and Avian trying their damnedest to kill Zafir now. This Gwen might be fed, but not fed enough. Falls to three, finally. But meanwhile, in the bot lane, Papa is being dove by Slaney and I'm just Harry. They're going to get this kill. They're probably going to get this inhibitor tower as well. So committing three members to the top lane just to kill this Gwen has cost them the inhibitor tower and possibly the inhib as well. Oh, they get a root onto Blitzcrank, but Kalista ult is there to bail him out. Baron buff still on all these four members. They've got the inhibitor in the bot lane for the price of their top laner. Yeah, absolutely can be a worthwhile trade, and you have to consider the fact that the teleport is available here for Zephyr, so a chance that the mid lane gets pushed out, maybe use the teleport then to allow that minion to tank for a bit longer, and then off the back of that, maybe you can look for something like this mid tower immediately afterwards, so don't be surprised to see this teleport come through, however, the dragon is spawning in about 40 seconds, so it's also understandable if they want to just back up, but no, Zephyr will teleport towards the top side, and now that Gwen split push comes through, but there is no Baron buff on the Gwen. Yeah, and Gwen will not have teleport to join at the dragon. That's a perfect talk onto Makashima. The W will not save him. They get the return kill onto Blitzcrank, but it's already cost them two lives. Double kill for I'm just Terry. And they keep going forward. Slaney uh, is trying his damage to do a lot of damage, but they will be pushed out for now. They keep pushing with the with this Baron buff. The mid lane tower is all but theirs. It's on the map a 4v3. Gwen in the top lane, three in the mid lane versus three defenders, but the defenders not strong enough to prevent the mid lane inhibitor from also falling. Now, two inhibs gone. Baron buff just barely still on, and they're pushing in the top lane, and they're going to join the Gwen here. They want this third inhibitor before they turn towards this ocean dragon. They're going forward, jump by Tristana, great flash to, to, to stop the Thranglethorns. And that's a very, very nice solo kill from I'm Just Harry. 
Now, can they chase them out of the base? They're going on towards this Viego, who goes gold, and Makishima tries to flank this. The Garen Judgment doing a lot of damage vain, and Garen with a kill each. They've managed to defend the last stronghold, the last inhibitor in their base. Arsland is taking kills left and right. 10-3 on the vein. He's going to get another one. The Condemn stuns safer against the wall. It's another triple kill for Arsland, who is really trying his hardest to put his team on his back. And they somehow prevented the game being over yet, but they're still 10,000 gold behind. Can yeah. they at least get the dragon, though? Yeah, the biggest factor is that dragon, right? It's the fact that now they've got themselves a potential win condition in this soul dragon. Yes, they're down 10,000 gold, but if they're able to maybe get a couple of dragons off of them, these mistakes that are coming through from this blue side composition, maybe they can get themselves a solar from there. Look at the champions they have. They've got Garen, they've got Fiora, they've got themselves Diana and a Vayne. All these champions get so much value from the ocean soul. It can be very dangerous. Uh, JME is just having a good time. I don't think the split screen is ever going to backdoor anyone. Um, so I'm not really sure what he's <laughs> doing, uh, charging around there. He's just sightseeing in the enemy jungle. <laughs> yeah, and he's alone as well. If he hooks anyone, I, I don't think uh, he's going to be the winner in any duels, despite how uh, strong he is compared to uh, a Blitzcrank not as fed here. He's alone, standing on the Blast Cone. Blast Cone's Papa over the wall into the Baron Pit. Has to knock him up to stay alive. Hooks. Hook misses. The rest of the team is not far away, but is are they close oh, no. enough? Now, Papa is in the <laughs> Baron Pit. Has to flash out. Well, the Hook got the flash. Interesting events here. I mean, it worked out. Therefore, it must have been a good play there coming through from JME. He gets himself a flash from the enemy mid laner. And as such, that might be a target you can now look to pick onto. And even though they were able to kill the dragons, right, there is still oh, no. the inhibitors went down. Oh, JME. Yeah, flash knock up, silence, Sliny gets a kill. That was so easy for them to kill Ragged Race here. And uh, now it's 5v4 on the map, only one inhibitor alive. Super minions pushing in two lanes. Lee Sports Wales, they want to end the game on this push. You have to think about the fact that, as you said, there's two inhibitors down. If the triple inhib goes down, you don't need the Baron, you don't need the Dragons. The minions themselves will do more than enough damage to end the game. So you can sort of just continue to threaten here in the bot lane, wait for that. Uh, mid lane wave to push in and there's so much threatening yeah they're not patient though they they already attacked the tower it's already down to a quarter hp and they're positioning for the attack they're pulling away the minions they're killing all of them before their own super minions arrive hook lands onto garen that's not necessarily the target you want but if you're so ahead does it really matter the moonfall gets a lot of traction though here comes the strangle thorns it's three kills for the red team and only no, three from the other as well. Here comes the vein, and uh, a fed vein against a low amount of enemy champions means another triple kill for us. We and once again, esports wells have overextended, over aggression costing them. They may have three inhibs, but they lost another fight. Yeah, they get themselves one Nexus Tower, so not the worst thing ever, but really a very scrappy fight coming through. And the big talking point there is the Moonfall from Papa landing onto four members, I believe, there, pulling them all in, blowing them up. And it means that you know, Ard is able to just go absolutely ballistic in the rest of the fight. There's no one to lock him up. All the CC is burned. All of the target focus is onto this Diana. And as such, the Fed Vein gets to free hit, gets to free damage, and it means that they're able to do so much work. However, look at the inhibitors, one spawning very soon, the other one not too far away either. And as such, it means we might only be seeing the one inhibitor down for this Ocean Dragon Soul Point being on the table. Yeah, but for now, uh, we need to pay attention to this Baron as well. It is alive, and uh, it's very, very hard to defend only open and dead inhibitors against a Baron buffed up team. So that is where Esports Wales put their attention for now, and they have all the vision in the world in the top side quadrant. Yeah, and I like the fact that they are doing this. The mid inhib about to come back off cooldown as is the bot lane. However, yeah, that Baron being down does mean now the side of Esports Wales, they can just sort of walk themselves into the base, take those inhibitors, and they just play with the minions. You don't have to hit anything. You don't need to hook anything. The other team has to force onto you, otherwise your minions will do work. So I want to see them play it very slowly now, show that level of respect to their opponents, get the aim inhibitors, and end the game with that knowledge. Yeah, just just take away uh, JME's keyboard button Q, and then you win the game. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Just let the minions triple inhibitor down, minion wave, hitting the one Nexus Tower. There's not a lot you can do except forced engage as the red side composition. So blue side doesn't have to do anything. They can wait, take their time, and as long as you wait for this Gwen now to grab that bot wave, they can take the two inhibitors and win the game just through the minions and the cannon. 
Yeah, uh, one very crucial thing uh, Slani now has, the Guardian Angel, so will need to be killed twice uh, for any kind of uh, fight winning for the side of the Chronicles of Garen. But now Zypher has walked in two cannon minions in the bot lane, and the mid lane inhibitor already almost gone. It's hanging on by a sliver of its health. Look at this. When will they pull the trigger to defend their base? Because if they do it too late, even if they win the fight, the minions will do the job. Harry now has been engaged by Makshima. Has the flash over the wall. Makshima goes through and gets nothing. Dies to the Tristana. Assisted by two teammates. Now all the inhibitors are dead once again. Tristana can even recall and teleport back into the base to make this a 5v4. It's looking bleak. Yeah, and look at the minions. This is what I was talking about because now they're doing so much work. They're being such a menace. And I think it would have been... Scary if that hit, but Jamie doesn't have missing it. Uh, engage. Yeah, now they're going for it. Art tries everything, but doesn't even get more than one auto off. Blitzcrank is the only casualty so far on the side of Esports Wales. They have gotten the vein. This game is over, ladies and gentlemen. They might even still lose their jungler. Ar Arvian is legendary, but three members are still standing. The ace goes through full Zyphir, and it's a 2-0 victory. A, a series of two absolute stunts for Esports Wales, even if the second one wasn't nearly as clean as the first one. Yeah, the 4v5 fight is just a little bit too much there for the side of the Chronicles of Garen mid. They're not quite able to take that one to the side of Esports Wales. And it's just a fairly slow game, even though mechanically speaking, there were some bright sparks there for the side of the Chronicles of Garen mid. There's just not quite enough in the tank at the very end to take out Esports Wales. Yeah, as we end, uh, uh, so to speak, a shining beacon of light for their team there in this last game. 15, 4, and 5 on the vein. Just not enough to put the team on their backs uh, against these very strong performances from the players of Esports Wells. Uh, with some hiccups, but uh, yeah, very well done uh, on a uh, more or less clean 2 0. <laughs> yeah, more or less clean 2 0. They do get themselves a 10,000 gold lead. And, you know, realistically speaking, I think that credit has to be given here to the side of Esports Wells in regards to the way that they. They didn't just get leads, they accelerated those gold leads into very major ones. And you know, when they win one team fight, they go from a three thousand, four thousand gold lead to about seven or eight thousand immediately, just by pushing waves, getting towers, getting neutral objectives on top of that, and slowly but surely increasing it in consistent increments. Yeah. And uh I think we can be a little bit forgiving for uh at least a little bit of the cockiness they showed in in these over aggressive engages, because when you are so far ahead this early in the game i mean can you really blame someone for wanting to be a little flashy yeah definitely not i mean they they looked in control they had the control they did well they basically didn't look like they were going to lose the series or any of the games in fact at any point um, it was their games to lose and they made sure they picked up the win yeah, definitely. And uh, now uh, we get the ability to talk with the support himself. JME is in the waiting room. We're ready to drag him in for a short winner's interview here. All right, here he is. Welcome and congratulations on another victory 2 0 today. That didn't look in trouble uh, even once, but some hiccups in the second game, yeah? Yeah, hi guys. Um, the, the vein was a little scary towards the end. We weren't, weren't too sure if we'd thrown it or not, but yeah, we tried our best to close out and stuff like that. A couple of dodgy hooks from me, the Blitzcrank, onto stuff like Garen. Probably didn't help, but <laughs> we tried our best. The game, game one was absolutely amazing, though. How, what a funny, interesting strategy. I bet that was so great to watch. We were, we were really just winging it, and it just turned out going fine in the end. Yeah, it definitely was an interesting strategy to observe, um, and unfortunately for your opposition, it wasn't really able to work out for them to go for that lane swap. And I just wanted to talk a bit about that Blitzcrank pick, because you looked really solid on that Alistar in game one, um, utilizing that heavy pulverized Bray effectively. And you know, was this um, Blitzcrank more of a flex, as in not role-based flex uh, pick, <laughs> or was it a genuine strategy you guys wanted to test out here in this game too? Um, we, we just sort of were trying some new picks. Like, we, we hadn't really scrimmed with that team comp before. Like, the the Callista was a super new pick as well. And we just thought we liked the sound of the bot lane. Callista, Blitzcrank, 
because we were kind of expecting a brand or a swain as well to come out but then the zyro emerged so yeah but yeah, and it's a it's a super combo pick for me all right then um you are now three zero in this group uh only being challenged last week by prime heads a little bit in that two one uh, last split, uh, the regular season went very well for you guys as well, but then in playoffs, things started falling apart. Are you confident that this is going to change the split? See, the difference is, last split, I wasn't on the team. So, hopefully, this split, I could be the difference maker in playoffs. Who knows? It's a mask gap, is it? If we get there, that is. It's not, I don't think anything's confirmed yet. Yeah, yeah so definitely far. a bit too early to, to tell in terms of whether yeah. or not this one, you know, you're, you're locked in just yet, but it's looking good, you're looking solid, and you're well, looking dominant. We're having a lot of fun playing together, and we're doing it fairly often, so hopefully things can keep going the same way. All right, then of all the teams that you've yet to face in this group, is there anyone in particular you want to uh, want to show how good you are? Anyone you really looking forward to playing? Oh, well, we were really looking forward to Team Rocket, but uh, I think we might have to use a substitute that week. So no, we're just looking forward to hopefully making playoffs and then being challenged across the other division as well. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. Unfortunately, you know, if that sub is forced to use, I definitely hope not because it, it would be a very interesting game to watch from our perspective. Yeah. Honestly, I hope it would be an entertaining game for you guys to play as well. Um, I guess my final question here is, for for you personally, um, who is your MVP for your own team, and is there anyone you want to give a shout out to uh, here? Now we are at the end of the stream. Well, I guess it would be rude rude not to give it to Sloyne after his pentakill in game one. And uh, on the enemy team, um, well, I'd love to give whoever brought uh, thought of the strategy in game one MVP, whoever did that, because that was so fun for for everyone involved. Well, I, I guess it was very fun for everyone involved in your team. Um, probably less for Ard, uh, as he got dived twice before the five <laughs> minute mark. Yeah, we, we saw <laughs> that straight away. myself, I can tell you that is not a very fun experience. The TP just did not do him any favors. I think I think there was an old, uh, which season was it where people just didn't care about laning 2v2 and it was just two versus one and the top laners got about five CS at eight minutes? Yeah, it was uh, season four and five. Oh, uh, beautiful. I I think uh, it's probably not the greatest idea to do that with an Azir because he's quite a high economy champion compared to our Karma, who's really low econ when we build a, as an enchanter. I think maybe if they want to do that strategy again, choose something like a Scion or something. I think that would be really cool for their draft. It's also easier to just dive with an Alistar than it is to dive with a Swain. True. True. Definitely, definitely a true statement. Then, uh, once again, congratulations on your victory today. I'm sure uh, you want to go back to your team to enjoy that one. <laughs> and uh, I have very much enjoyed tonight. Uh, I want to thank you guys for playing. I want to thank Recollect for casting with me. And, of course, all of you guys for watching. Uh, I'll give the final words to my co-caster and say good night and see you soon again, hopefully. Yep, thank you to our wonderful streamer as well, um, the Great Snake, who is always here, always happy to, um, I don't know if he's actually happy to be here, but I'm sure he is, I'm sure he's having a great time. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to everyone for, for stopping by and watching, and hopefully we'll get to see you all again very soon. Uh, but I have been Recollect with Subbing Motor Joe, and we'll see you shortly. <laughs>